Hi there and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And in this video we're going to be looking at one of the more basic things but something I do get questions about and recently uh, I actually saw a bunch of questions about it. So I want to go into a little bit of detail on what block inline and inline block are, what the differences are, and why it matters and when you might want to actually switch the display property of something and why it can be useful in certain circumstances. So let's jump right into it. All right, so let's take a look here in VS Code and get started at this and look at the differences between block inline block uh, or block inline and inline block. And right now what we can see is I just have a very simple example on here right now and we have a bunch of blocks. So one very simple thing is most things are blocks. Almost everything is a block. So one example of a block is a paragraph and a paragraph, if I come on here and I give an outline of three pixels solid red, just so we can see them there, and we can see I get these boxes that show up around my paragraphs. So this is highlighting the actual paragraph and you'll notice even though my text is stopping here, it's forming a complete block that goes all the way across the side, even with this empty space here. Uh, I am using outline here just because a border will add to the total size of things. I don't think it's a big issue in this case, but it's outline is a nicer one to use um, instead of borders if you're trying to debug or do anything where you don't want to actually impact the, the layout of anything. So that's why I did that. I do have a video that goes into uh, that in a bit more detail if you do want to check it out. So an important thing to know about block level elements is block level elements always stack on top of each other, even if they have room to go next to one another. Um, but by default, actually, before we even get to that, by default, they do have a width of 100%, meaning they take up all the available space that they can. So here, uh, if I make this bigger, they're going to keep growing or shrinking. The only thing that's limiting their total size is uh, their parent. So the parent has a size on it. It has some padding. So it's limiting the size of those paragraphs and the width of those paragraphs. But the width of those is at 100% by default. Now, even though they're 100%, if we do a width of 50% on here, they're still not going to go next to each other or even let's make it like let's make it like 25% because then there would be room for all three to go next to each other but we can still see they're not going next to one another still stacking one on top of each other because they're block elements so they will always stack one on top of each other they force a new line of content automatically and this is a really good thing because if it wasn't that case let's take off my outline and my width here um, imagine if a paragraph didn't start a new line and it just started the next thing just started over here well, that would be terrible, right? That would be super awkward. Well, that's what inline elements are for. In inline elements are for when you don't want a new line of text. So something like our links that we have here, or if you had strong or M tags, uh, just to name a few, there are quite a bit of them. Um, so <coughs> let's actually, we'll turn our red outline on there so we can still see that. And I'm gonna go onto my A and we'll give this an outline as well. We'll do an outline of three pixels solid. Oh, I guess we'll go with, should we go orange? or with orchid that should stand out um, compared to the other one we had on there. And now we can see that these, all these links here have boxes around them as well. But the boxes are starting where the link starts and they're stopping where the link ends. Unlike the paragraph where it would stretch all the way across. And actually let's shorten that last paragraph up. Let's make that last paragraph really, really short. And there we go. So even though this is a really short paragraph, it's taking up that whole line. Whereas these links that are inline elements, they're only taking up the width of the content themselves. And that is a big distinction between um, block level and inline. And the other one again is that block level elements will always force a new line of content. And again, this would be good with a paragraph. You wouldn't want another paragraph squeezing in because there's empty space available. So they don't do that. They always stack one on top of each other. Whereas our links here, their links are sitting at the width of them. And that doesn't matter if it breaks across one or two lines. When it's an inline element, it's always going to just be its own width and it's gonna make a box all the way around it. Now, one really interesting thing here is there's actually these things called anonymous boxes that are getting wrapped around all this other content. Now, it's not terribly important to know this, um, but they are we are getting boxes around the other content here, but there's no way of selecting it. So it doesn't really change your life in any really big way, but um, it does have a little bit of an impact and the reason it does have an impact is, let's say these links had a height that was bigger than the these other things here, that could cause problems, right? And it's one of the reasons actually on inline elements, you can't give them a height. So if I do height 100 pixels, nothing will happen. Or if I do a margin top 200 pixels, nothing will happen. Uh, so I'm saving here, we're refreshing, nothing is changing. Margin bottom 200 pixels, nothing happens. 
or padding top, same idea, 200 pixels, nothing, or padding bottom, all of that, no impact whatsoever. The, well, the padding, sorry, the padding top and bottom did have an impact there. You can see the outline has gone a little bit crazy, but it won't actually impact your layout at all. And I'm gonna turn these off because that just makes things confusing to look at. Uh, and we'll get back to that in a second actually. Um, but what one of the reasons they do this is because imagine if you could give links a margin bottom that's bigger than the text around it, that would be really awkward. It would cause just some problems to happen. And this is a little bit where those anonymous boxes come in. Because one thing you can do is you can make your link or any inline element have a bigger font size than what's around it, and that will increase its height. So if I say 300% on here, my links will become really, really big. <laughs> and I'm gonna focus more on this bottom one here because looking at this bottom one, what's happening is uh, you'll notice that it's pushed everything around it here. So the anonymous box that's around this is giving this a height that's actually the same as here. So the box, the anonymous box here um, is balancing that out and that's gonna stop this line of text from sort of having to wrap around it or I guess, go. I don't know what would happen really uh, since we don't live in that world. I don't know if it would go underneath or whatever it is, but those boxes do exist. But it's important to know that generally speaking, you can't really affect the height of inline elements and they do that on purpose because if not, this weird stuff happens where, you know, this looks terrible. So I wouldn't suggest doing something like that. And again, you can't select these anonymous boxes, so they don't have a big impact on your life. I'm, you know, I don't want to, hopefully I'm not confusing you too much with that. Um, now, so that's block level elements. They always force a new line. Uh, they can accept margin and padding top and bottom, and it will work and they affect the layout. Whereas inline elements, they live inside of other things and they don't force new lines. And, you know, again, that would suck. Imagine giving a strong tag and then that forced a new line of content. It just wouldn't even be usable. So inline elements, they run in line. They, they, you know, it flows our text along. It prevents text from breaking. Very, very useful. But what happens if you need an inline element that can also have padding and margins on it? That situation does arise itself quite frequently and that's where inline block comes in. So, uh, the, so the example that I like to give for this is when we style links as buttons. So I'm gonna do a link here, BTN. So I have a link with a class of BTN. I'm not gonna have it go anywhere. And we'll just say, I am a link slash button. There we go. And we get it down there. Um, and we have the class of BTN on here. So when I come up to here and let's select that dot BTN. Um, and actually we don't, let's turn off all of this for now because I think it's going to get in our way. And, uh, the shortcut by, for commenting out code, by the way, in uh, VS code, because people always ask me when I do this is, um, control forward slash, or if you're on a Mac, it'd be command forward slash. Uh, I'm writing this in an SCSS file. So it looks like a JavaScript comment right now, but if you're in regular CSS, it would just do a regular CSS comment block around all of that instead. Um, so my .btn, let's give this a, you know, you want to make it look like a, a button or, you know, something we can click on. So let's give that a background of light blue, a color of, whoops, color of black, uh, padding of, we're going to make it really big. We want a big button. So let's make, give it a padding of like 75 pixels and left and right. You always want the left and right padding on a button to be bigger than the top and bottom to make it actually look balanced. So we'll make this like 150. This is a massive button. We're gonna do that. Um, text decoration of none. I'm sort of doing this deco decoration of none. Um, is that enough? Let's hit save and see. And okay, there I have my buttons coming in and maybe we should give this a hover state. And have you noticed the problem that's come up right now? There is a problem that has appeared. My button's working, my giant button is working, but hey, it's it's interfering sort of with these paragraphs that I have here. Hmm, what's going on? Um, so remember when I originally gave the padding to my links and those outlines sort of went crazy? It's a little bit the same thing that's happening here. I'm giving an inline element padding and uh, we saw actually just really fast, let's say you, that happened to you and you wanted to push it down, then you go margin top, 200 pixels to try and give it some room and it doesn't move. So this is the same thing I did before. I gave this the links a margin top and it didn't work. So what's happened here is I'm giving it the margin top. It's also not working because even though I'm trying to make it look like a button, uh, this, you know, it's still an inline element. And 
Padding, interestingly enough, applies to the element, but it doesn't actually affect the size of it because you can't give inline elements heights. So, you know, the padding top and bottom here, it's it's showing up visually, but it's not actually doing anything. It's not affecting the layout. It's not, it's just getting in the way pretty much. Um, so this is where things, you know, you might come in and this is where it's useful to use display inline block. And let's hit save on that. And boom, now my margin top is working. <laughs> and if I took my margin top off, because we don't really need it anymore, we can see that the padding is actually influencing it. So if I took off my padding, my button's really small. The margin here is just the, the normal margin from my text. But as soon as that padding goes on, it's actually being included in the size of that button. So it's uh, you know my, my gigantic button here. So it prevents things from overlapping one another. And you might be going, well, what's, you know, what's, why not just use display block? Um, so yeah, okay, let's go try that out. And there's two things that are going to happen. One of them is the size of it is going to go skewy with because it's going to try and go to 100%. So then it just becomes more annoying to work with. Uh, and the other thing though, is if you wanted to have multiple buttons in a row, and this is obviously a very common design pattern where you end up with multiple in a row. And I'm saying buttons, these are links that would be going somewhere else that we're styling to look like buttons, but the same could hold true for actual buttons as well. So here my, I could do like another one here. And I want these, hopefully my text isn't too long on that. They were, <laughs> I'll just put <laughs> one more. We'll try that instead. Oh, there's still not enough room. Okay, let's make these a little bit bigger, <laughs> smaller. Let's make this a bit more realistic. We'll do like 25 pixels, 75 pixels. There we go. So these look more like you might with the, a regular button. Um, and you can see they actually go next to each other. So remember, even if these were a display block instead, um, and then they stretched and you did a whole bunch of work to stop it from stretching to full size, and you fought that, I would still end up with them stacking one against one after the other. And then you'd have to find a way to get them to go next to each other. And you know, do you really want to get into that? Are there ways? Of course there are. You could start using display flex, you could start using floats, but my goodness, we'd be getting complicated for nothing in that case. So that's why I like using inline block for this. So with inline block, what you're getting is the, the ability to set margin and padding the same way you would on a block level element or height and stuff like that if you needed it, but also allow the elements to not force new lines. So they're in line in the sense that they go next to one another, but they are uh, block in the sense that they can have height and margins and paddings and all of that on all their sides. Inline elements can have margin and padding left and right that will affect things, but not top and bottom. Um, whereas, as we can see now, the inline block do. If you look at something, it's behaving a lot like an image actually, and images are actually inline elements, but they're replaced elements. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but they pretty much, any replaced element, such as an image or I think an iframe and a couple of other things, they are replaced elements in that um, it's, you know, the content of it gets, let's not worry about what a replaced element is, but they will behave just like an inline block element in general, which is why if you put like four images, they'll go next to one another, but images can obviously have a height and a width to them. So technically speaking, they're inline, but they're behaving just like an inline block element does. Um, also, I'm going to link down below to something that's really interesting just because while I was researching this, just to make sure I had all my facts straight before making this video, um, the I came across that now we can have a, or they're starting to introduce a two, two value syntax to the display property, which is interesting. I was thinking about talking about it in this video, but in general, I want to target this more towards beginners. But if you're someone who's really into the whole world of CSS, it could definitely be a really interesting read. I think that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to see that video on outlines, how they're great for debugging and some other awesome things you can do with it, uh, the video for that will be linked down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to keep on making your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.